The South Dublin Union was Ireland's largest workhouse with over 3,200 inmates on a 50 acre site roughly on the location of where James the Hospital is today. It was seized by members of the Irish Volunteers led by Eamon Kant who had assembled at Emerald Square, had come down Cork Street and had seized the building on Easter Monday. Now as well as seizing the main complex of the building, they also seized a number of outlying buildings. Um, Watkins Brewery in RD Street, Rose Distillery in um, Mount Brown and the Jemison, and the Jemison Distillery nearby. Now despite the fact that they were seizing distilleries and breweries, it should be said that none of the volunteers decided to partake of uh, the products of any of these institutions. It was a sober affair. The complex of buildings was almost like a small town, laid out with churches, buildings, alleys, streets, effectively a town within a city. The purpose of seizing the South Dublin Union and the buildings around it was essentially again to interfere with troop movements. Reinforcements that might come into Kingsbridge Station, troops in the Royal Hospital and most especially troops in Richmond Barracks. So there was a similar pattern to, other, uh, to the seizure of other locations in the city. As was the case in many parts of the city, the volunteers in and around the South Dublin Union came in for a great deal of hostility from members of the public. Um, in Mount Brown, apparently, you know, the volunteers got into scuffles with people who were deeply hostile to what they were doing. And these would have been poor areas, probably these were the families of ex-servicemen. That was a factor there, just as it was in more publicised places such as O'Connell Street and around the GPO. In Mount Brown, the position they had was quite vulnerable to being attacked from the Royal Hospital, which became a continual source of fire when fighting broke out on Monday and Tuesday. On Monday and Tuesday, there was quite intense fighting in the area as British troops entered the complex. And there was some very, very intense fighting, kind of not quite hand-to-hand -hand fighting, but certainly what you could describe as street fighting, almost house-to-house -house fighting. Monday and Tuesday saw extremely heavy fighting, and parts of the complex would have been seized by British troops. Thursday would have seen extremely heavy fighting as well, but it seems that after that, the British military decided to concentrate their attention elsewhere in other parts of the city, and the volunteers in the South Dublin Union held out until Sunday when they surrendered. Alongside Kant, probably the most famous individuals involved in the fighting at the South Dublin Union were William T. Cosgrave and most especially Cahill Brewer, whose reputation for bravery was very much established um, by his experience of the fighting in the South Dublin Union. Brewer apparently was wounded about 25 times by bullets and shrapnel from grenades, but apparently kept insisting on singing God Save Ireland despite the fact that he was wounded. And this was seen as a great example of bravery. It copper fastened his reputation as a, a f fighter of fearsome qualities. And that reputation would, I suppose, be I suppose, secured once more by the manner of his own death later on in the Irish Civil War. It's ironic to think, though, that Eamon Kant's brother was killed exact, almost a year after his brother had seized the South Dublin Union. In fact, exactly a year after his brother had seized the South Dublin Union. But Sergeant Major William Kent was killed on the 24th of April 1917, not in Ireland, but in the Western Front. He, had, he was a Sergeant Major in the Royal Dublin Fusiliers. And we look at Eamon Kent and his brother William, you can see a case of two brothers fighting very, very different wars. Thank <laughs> you.